All right, normally it would start with a freshly washed dog um, and blow dried. And when you, after you wash, when you're blow drying, you're gonna blow dry in the direction of the hair growth always. You want this top line to lay down all the way. You want this, the ears have to be completely dry. If you don't have the ears completely dry, you will not get an even, um, an even trimming with the thinning shears. It'll look choppy. And then on the chest, you want to accentuate the muscle here, the scapula. So you want the hair to be blow dried forward this way and down right here under the, under the ears down. When you're, when you're blow drying the legs, the, the featherings of the legs, you're going to blow dry it straight down. Unless you have a dog without coat, without a lot of coat, then you can blow dry up and then down after. Same with the chest if you don't have a lot of chest hair. Um, the back, you're going to blow dry up the, up the pastures, the hawks, up the front side here, and then you're going to lay back down. She has a lot of feathering, so I always blow dry this straight down. A lot of people make mistakes with the tail. They'll pull it out and blow dry this way, but sometimes that causes little flips. So what you do is you blow dry the tail straight down. You can hold it right here and blow dry straight down on both sides, and then you can fluff it after, but just blow dry it straight down. You can blow dry up upwards on the bottom and then blow dry down after. But basically all you're wanting to do is show all the muscular parts and all the working parts of the dog. So you don't want that to be too fluffy where it's hiding it or make them look too heavy. With a golden, when you're showing them, there's not a huge amount of trimming. You're really trimming you're trimming the ears to make it look, um, to make it, you're basically wanting to make the head look broader and a better expression. So you're taking off, <laughs> snorting, you're taking off the whiskers, not if they're under nine months old though. Um, you use a whisker whacker, which I have here, really easy, and you're just going to slide it over and it takes off the whiskers without having to cut them. You're also going to do that on the eyebrows and a little bit on the head just to blend it a little bit. The rest will be with thinning shears. But so this, this side is done. You also have to do it underneath. Just all these little extra whiskers. She's not a fan. You're taking the whisker whacker and you're just, just gently going over it. You don't have to do it, um, you don't have to press hard and it just takes that off. It's not gonna be perfect because I'm just going over it, you know? Uh, oops, I'm whisker whacking my nails. So it makes the muzzle look thicker and not as narrow and it just gives a better look to the face. Okay. For the feet, you need a cat-like foot. So you don't want the toes to be separated, but you also want them to look clean. So you take thinning shears, and first you can just lightly take what's on the top off. You're gonna wanna go in between the toes. She's a little dirty from the mud. And you just go on each side, not in this way, but on each side. That way you don't make it blocky looking. I already, after washing her and blow drying her, I shaved out the pads with a 30. So that part's already done. 
always do that before you trim the feet. That way you get a better looking foot. Or I should say a, a more precise look for the foot. Ah, Jamie, no. Do you want to sit? Do you want to sit so that you'll behave better? No, apparently not. On the back of the foot, between the pad and the, the little elbow part of the pad and the foot, stop. Stop. You don't want to take it all off but you want to calm it down some, if she'll let me. Jamie, stop. She's not the perfect dog to try this on, but she has the hair. So you're just kind of going out straight from, stop, straight from the pad. You have an angle from the pad and you just trim it. Stop. Oh my God, you're being a pain. Okay. After you use the thinning shears, then you're just going to want to make nice even edges with the scissors. You're a heavy breather. Yes, you are. Yes. Can you see that? Okay, so brush up, take the thinning shears, Just take off the stuff that's right on top that's obvious. A 46 inch tooth or a 46 tooth thinning shear is the best one to use because it's not too chunky and not too fine. Separate the toes, do it sideways in between. Oh, take that mud out. Nope. Jamie, wait. wait. Then you take your curve shears and you just clean up the edges. If she would stay still. Okay. Straight off the pad to the next, to the little pad behind the foot. Stop. Jamie. Oh my God. So make sure you comb out underneath the ear and on top of it real well. She doesn't have a huge amount of hair right now because I try to keep it under control so it's easier. But what you're going to do, you don't want all this sticking out and you also don't want all this under here. So you hold it straight up, take your thinning shears, you go up, just do a couple of little Cut. Never too much. You can't put hair back on, but you can always take more off. And then you take the comb and comb it back down. Still looks natural, but you get a lot off. You have a little bit of static, girl. So you want it to look natural, so you don't want to do too much. But you also want the ear to lay down nicely when it's down and not have the thickness coming out. Don't do too much right here because when you lay the ear back down, it might be a hole. So that is always the part that you're going to go slower on and less is more.
because this here is like you can't cut it if it keeps moving. Okay. Okay. On the ears, all of this is it's just all fly away. What you do is you, for the back of the ear, you're going to hold the ear this way and you're just going to take your thinning shears and just go along the edge. Make sure not to cut the leather. They'll never let you do it again. Then to do the front side, and you can see how much nicer that looks. It still looks natural. This side. I don't know if I can do it this way, but you hold it up. And you're just going to take the same way. You're going to want more off towards the bottom of the ear than the top because you can't, you don't want the top to then look like they got a haircut. You don't want it ever to look like they got a haircut. When, for this, for this top part here, there's two ways of doing it. One is you brush it up and you take the thinning shears, if I can get the hair off of it, and you just do a couple little, and then comb it back down. So it kind of lays down and looks a little bit more natural. The other way of doing it, if you have a undercoat rake or a Mars Coat King um, that does undercoat, you can just comb it off. This one's not really showing it, but you can also do this underneath and it'll just, sorry, let me pull this up. Um, and it'll take some of that out and lay it down. That's also good to use when you want to calm down the shoulder and not have a very noticeable kind of roll on the shoulder. Still natural looking, but contouring the bone and making the chest look better. Wow. <laughs> a little hairy. Oh, well, I guess I could do this part here a little bit. Wait. Where's my comb? Oh, there's. You can do this part right here just by stay, holding it up and going in, but just trimming from the inside part of the ear out because you really just want to calm down all that hair on the ear. Stop. The ears are the hardest part of doing a golden because if you're ever going to mess up, it's going to be the ears. And they're, you can't hide it. If you mess it up, you've messed it up. So always, if you've never done ears before, practice, probably practice about two months before your first show that you're going to be in. That way you get an idea of how it goes and you figure out what mistakes you're making. Don't do it the day of a show or the day, be the evening before because the hair won't grow back in that time. All right, I'm just going to really fast do this side and be done with it. So. She is not a fan of doing the ears, but most dogs aren't.
kind of weird doing this while someone's watching. <laughs> Needs a little bit more cleanup on the ears. I don't want to see flyaway hair everywhere. I also don't want to take too much off. Another reason why you do this a few days ahead of time. So if you make any mistakes, it has time to be fixed before a show. And then when you're at the show, you only need to do little tiny cleanups each morning. Tiny bit on the ears, tiny bit on the feet, tiny bit on the whiskers should be all that's necessary after you've done a full grooming. When using the Coat King um, or Undercoat Rake, you're going to want to pull the skin up tight and then go down to make a nice even line here. Always dremel the nails. You don't want the nails sticking out. You want them to be nice and rounded. Whenever you're showing, always dremel the nails. Even if you have to cut them first, dremel them so they don't scratch anyone and they look nice. After you've dremeled the nails, then you're going to want to just go over with your shears and just clean up anything that is sticking out after you've dremeled the nails. Sometimes the nails get in the way and like here you have a little extra and you just need to take that off. I'm not going to take anything off of her feathering because I think it looks really nice. Underneath, um, down here, only if there's like really long pieces would you just kind of pull them out or use a thing shear to just make them look more even. But she really doesn't have that problem. You're gonna do the same thing in the front right here. Sometimes you have little pieces that are longer and you can just normally just pull them out. Hers doesn't want to, <laughs> of course not. Now, like I said, you're only making it look more even. You're not, you're not getting rid of it. You're not cutting it. You're just making it look a little more natural. Okay, with the back feet, you have the hawks. You're supposed to, everything is about, everything's about angles. So, let's see, let me stack her real fast. hard because she's sideways on the table hmm yeah this might not be a long enough table anyways you want to put the foot down the way you're gonna stack you want to have it out some not out like a German Shepherd but out and then you want to you want to just make it look even this way so it's not a lot you want to keep more hair on the back hawk than you would on the front just comb it up Comb it to one side. Take your thinning shears and just even it a little bit. You can always just go from the back of the pad out to get your first line. It's kind of hard because I'm trying not to be in the way. 
and C at the same time. <laughs> And then just follow it to the foot like you did, same as you did the front foot. If I can get her to let me do it. Back feet are harder than front feet because they never want to give it to you. They're always pulling away. Okay, in between. Always remember to go sideways in between the toes. Finish with the shears, going around all the edges. Kills me. If you can see, but same as the front in between the legs or on the sides, any really long pieces that aren't the same on both sides or just kind of strangly, just lightly thinning through them off. So with the golden tail, you'll see a lot that people just chop the bottom off just like a straight line. All right, they're supposed to look natural. They're not supposed to ever look like they have a haircut. So try not to make it so blunt. I don't use scissors for the bottom of the tail. The rule is you pull the tail down. The actual bone of the tail is not to exceed the hocks, but to, to go to it, you have that much extra hair. I don't want to make her look like she has a short tail. So you just bring it out. Here's where the end of the tail is. Twist it. You're going to use thinning shears, not regular shears. And just take it off. All right, hers is a little thicker than normal. Then recomb it. It still has a little bit of a blunt edge, but with things here, you never have it looking like it was just chopped off. Smitty, move, move. So I'm on the wrong side of doing this, but just hold it up and just, just make it look a little bit softer. You just don't want it to look like somebody just chopped off the bottom of the tail. Then you're going to hold it up and all you're going to want to do is just little tiny bits. You just don't want it to be so long that it looks, un, you know, just at the wrong angle. You want a flag tail. Not perfect because it's not supposed to look cut. Can't see how it looks, but. static again. Basically that's all of the actual all of the actual trimming that you're gonna do on a golden. You're just trimming tail, hawks, feet, um, front feet here, ears, the top of the head if needed, 
she's not really out of place on top of her head. But you just want a nice clean looking muzzle. It gives a really good expression, makes her head look a little bit broader. And uh, with her being a female, she has a little bit more of a narrow head, but good bone. So you don't want her head to look too thin and, and uh, pointy. And I think she looks really good. That's just basics for grooming for show. You can use that for any pet dog also. Make them look good. All right, done.